Good morning, and welcome to Let's Talk Real Estate on 101.5 Sports Radio, Lakes Region. Today's show is presented by the Cisneros Realty Group, powered by EXP Realty, and sponsored by Dana Gunnarsson, agent at the Joe Suazo Allstate Insurance Office, Hudkins Law, Title, and Settlement, and NCT, Nano Coding Technologies. It's time to join our host at Let's Talk Real Estate. And good Saturday morning. My name is Karina Cisneros, realtor with the Cisneros Realty Group, powered by EXP Realty. We cover the New Hampshire Lakes region from Concord to Franconia. Our show focuses on all aspects of real estate. And in the next 30 minutes, we'll share with you important information that will help you with either buying or selling your home. In the studio today for her second appearance is Ann Glines, co-owner of LAP Appraisals um, with her husband, Mike Glines. Um, welcome to our show, Ann. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Uh, how long have you been in business, Ann? Um, 18 to 20 years. Okay. And last time you were on the show, you told us that you do about three to four appraisals a week. Right. And again, that's why you're sitting across my, my uh, studio here, my uh, this mic. I appreciate the opportunity. Because we want to educate the public right. and ourselves so we understand what you do and, and how value of properties um, are calculated. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. So <clears throat> in the last show, we talked about uh, what is an appraisal, uh, what how value is calculated. Let's talk about... Um, how you approach an appraisal for FHA loans, VA loans, and rural development loans. Why are they different in that, in that way? They're different because these particular programs that are available are normally for first-time home buyers. Yes. And um, they have specific guidelines that they go by. Why? Because that's what's required for them as to why they've come up with them. Are they looking for health and safety issues? Yeah. What they want to do is, I, th I think it's more or less to guarantee that a home is going to be there a little bit longer. Give me some examples, please. Well, for example, um, a lot of people don't understand with FHA, rural development, and VA, regardless of the age of the home, if there's chipped and peeling paint with exposed wood on the exterior of the building or on outbuildings, barns, sheds, fences, that those things have to be resolved. The paint has to be scraped and retreated, and the purpose for that is to make sure that there's no insect infest you know, infestation. Yeah. Excuse me, I apologize for that. Anyways, that's what they're looking for. Is that the for. reason? Yeah, for believe pests? it or not. Really? And that pest problem is not really something that's prevalent here in New Hampshire. However, our hard winters certainly are difficult and can have problems as far as wood rot is concerned. What so other guidelines? Um, let's see. Health and safety issues such as handrails. Why? They want to make sure somebody's going up and down the stairs that they well, have that something make... to hold on to and not fall and get hurt and that get sued. Sense. No, that, that makes total sense. Prevent a lawsuit. GFIs in kitchen and bathrooms are all things that need to be taken care of. Um, down pipes on a hot water heater. A lot of people don't realize the importance of having that. Uh, having what? A down pipe on a hot water heater. What does that mean? So if you get a top of a hot water heater, normally you have a spout that sticks out on the side, and yeah. that's like a pressure release. Yes. If they don't have a down pipe pushing that water to the floor, if for some reason that um, explodes, yes. it will actually go straight out. And if you're standing in front of it, you can get severely burned. Uh -oh. So the purpose of having the downpipe is so that it pushes the water, whatever, to the floor. Yeah. And that way, less likelihood of somebody getting hurt. So when you uh, get called by a bank, I guess, you get mm -hmm. called by banks, right? Mm -hmm. um, by the way, how what percentage of your appraisers are ordered by banks and by private individuals or private sector? We do the most work that we do would be for lenders. Okay. Okay. Uh, we do do a small portion of private work, but most of it is for lenders. There's a lot to it. For example, an appraiser, when they go to a property that they're doing for FHA or rural development, they need to know where the well is, where the septic is, where the property line is. And there's reasons for that. They want to make sure that the septic system is far enough away from a well so they don't have contamination. They want to make sure that the well and the septic is on their lot and not encroaching on another lot. 
Believe it or not, my husband actually did a new construction in Belmont where somebody built part of the house on somebody else's land because not everybody was paying attention. So it's important that we know where those things are. So I remember when I was starting in the business mm -hmm. and I helped a buyer mm -hmm. buy a single family home in Alexandria mm -hmm. or Alexandria. Mm -hmm. And it was an older house mm -hmm. and the, it had a dug well. Right. But the dug well was inside the basement. Okay. It wasn't outside the house. Mm -hmm. And I remember that we had to change the type of loan mm -hmm. because one of the guidelines, I guess, for a VA loan was that the well, the dug well could not be inside the house for some reason or... So anyway, that was quite a, a learning uh, moment for me. All right, thanks for sharing that on FHA loans, VA loans, and rural development. Um, okay, we, we got one more segment coming up with Anne. So in the meantime, uh, it's time to take a break. Uh, you're listening to Let's Talk Real Estate with Karina Cisneros on 101.5 WEEI Sports Radio Lex Region. We'll be right back. 